Pac-Man World and its remake, Pac-Man World Repack, are surprisingly smart 3D platformer collectathons, which both follow and subvert genre traditions, utilizing a combination of open and linear level design. On first impression, Pac-Man World is a pretty standard hop and bop. You complete levels in sequence, generally moving from left to right, fight a gimmicky boss at the end, and move on to the next world. Each level contains countless optional collectibles, all of which are pretty darn useless if you breeze through the critical path. But if you bother to actually examine your environments, you'll find a compelling engine of exploration. There's fruit everywhere, and while this fruit superficially increases your score, it's also used as a key to open doors, and those doors that themselves contain everything from one-ups to actual keys, to secret mazes, to floating golden letters, to tokens. And each of those collectibles likewise has a use. The one-ups are a sizable buffer for your mistakes, the golden letters unlock extra platforming gauntlets, the tokens let you play a slot machine, the actual keys enable you to save Pac-Man's family, and everything tallies up in the end toward a big old completion percentage. And it's not like this circus of collectibles is just scattered around thoughtlessly, the entire game is built around them. As discussed, Pac-Man World may initially appear linear, but if you're determined to grab everything, the levels expand immensely, both literally and mechanically. You'll frequently find a locked door, locate the fruit to open it some ways ahead, and then loop back around to open the door. This sounds like simple backtracking on its surface, and sometimes it is, but it often recontextualizes the entire level flow through a simple change in perspective. When played backwards, hazards become platforms, platforms become hazards, and you're generally treated to all new angles on what initially seemed like lackadaisical level design. It teaches the player to be more mindful of their surroundings, and simultaneously makes them better at the platforming. Despite their optional nature, these collectibles, and the pursuit thereof, contain the majority of gameplay. If you ignore the exploratory elements, you haven't really played Pac-Man World, because without them the game is missing much identity or purpose. Sure, it has its charming narrative and throwback boss battles, but the meat of the game, the actual platforming, is only properly utilized in pursuit of 100% completion. This is an above average collectathon masquerading as a forgettable joyride. It's certainly not a masterpiece in either context, but it still deserves recognition as an unusual stepping stone in its storage subgenre.